Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Riley and today I'm going to be installing the Volant Performance Cold Air Intake on my 1997 K1500 Suburban. So I'm going to get right back out there and do it. I don't think that I'm going to be talking a lot while I do it. I think I'm just going to overlay some audio over the footage because it's very windy outside right now and I don't have any kind of special microphone or anything to handle wind. So I'm just going to film it and I'll come back and I'll overlay audio of what I'm doing. But I hope that you guys enjoy it. This should be super simple, super easy. I might not even have to cut the video and we can have this new intake on and get my old Spectre intake off. This is the overlay of the video. So right here you can see I just have a normal um, flathead screwdriver bit and I'm just going around and I'm removing all of the hose clamps from the current Spectre intake. So that didn't take too long. Now I'm just removing the pieces. I just de-hose clamp. You can see them there. And there's this little sensor, I'm not exactly sure what the sensor is, but it's something to do with the intake. I don't know if it's intake pressure or what, but it's just connected on the side. So I disconnected that, and you can see I'm fiddling with the sensor a little bit, trying to figure out how I'm going to be getting that out. So you basically just pull it out, it's in like a little grommet. Uh, it's not, it's kind of hard to get out, surprisingly. It takes a little bit of time to just like kind of slowly wiggle it back and forth because it's a plastic piece and I was pretty worried about breaking it during all of this. So I was being very careful trying to remove it. And the new intake has a little grommet in the side where you just press it back in. And this is Volant Performance's intake again. So you just press it back in there, make sure it seats all the way so it's water tight and you're not getting any water into your intake manifold because that would be terrible if you got in there. So I'm just messing around with it. I don't really know what I'm doing here. But I'm just trying to get it pressed in. The grommets are pretty tight, which I like because that's going to keep them very waterproof and help not let any other air in. So I understand why they're tight. But you can see there, it's just a little connector. You can see it's sticking through the back side. And now I'm removing the first bolt on the back of the intake. So this is the only thing that actually holds on the stock intake. It's like this little wing nut plastic piece which I'm not exactly sure why they did that, but then you could just take off the rest of the intake like so. It just has like two kind of little clips, so you just pull up the back and then pull it towards the front of the car and it'll come right off. You can see I removed the breather valve right there too. I'm not sure if that's a crank case, if that's a crank case breather or not, but it is something I forgot to remove this bolt. So I believe this is a 7.30 seconds. I show it to the camera, but I did a really bad job of waiting for these to focus, so I'm pretty sure this is a 730 seconds for the head of these and I just removed it and while I was removing it I noticed that this was actually two bolts that were rusted together which kind of sucked but you can see there I didn't do a very good job of that but it's two bolts that were kind of rusted together so I had to go back later and take them apart so here is my um, MAF my mass airflow sensor sorry so just taking out the mass airflow sensor, taking out the old filter, I kind of had a pile of parts on the ground behind the wheel there. So you see me duck down, take some tools over there once in a while. So now I'm just working on removing my old air box, I guess you could call it. It's really just like that little metal plastic piece. You can see the tape on the side where it was starting to wear through the actual body of the intake, which is why I ended up having to replace it. These bolts were very very stuck so it took me quite some time to actually get it out I'm pretty sure that there's yeah there's a cut it took me a while to actually get these out because they were just they've been in there for probably the last five or six years I think I've had that Spectre air, take, air intake on the truck so it took me quite some time to actually pull it off but then once I took out the one bolt I can come back in here and just remove this metal air box and so far it had been going really easy everything was super simple this is where I started to run into some troubles so you can see me getting the two bolts ready that actually hold in the new Volant performance uh, air intake box so I'm just kind of removing the nuts that I would put on them earlier and getting them prepared but this is kind of the spot where it started going a little south for me and it's not because of the kit it's just because of what I have in the truck so you can see I'm trying to get it to fit in there to start bolting it to the inner fender of the truck, but something you can't see, you can kind of see it if you look right over my uh, intake, right over the, I'm spacing on a lot of words right now, but 
you look kind of like right underneath my blue and pink wires I actually have all my grounds for the truck right there on the inner fender so I had to remove all of the grounds and there's a big like sky high car audio distribution for the top of the battery that I bolted in there so I ended up having to unbolt that and that was just kind of the start of having a large car audio rig struggling with this kit because it is a very inclusive kit and it does keep it very nice and tight to the truck which is really good and I appreciate that but it does cause me some problems just because I had all this wiring in there already which in hindsight isn't going to be too bad because that stuff probably need to be moved so after I got moved you can see it now fits in there nice I can set it right in there press it up against the stock hole that's in the fender and runs behind the passenger light for the air intake Pop those bolts into the two holes that are already drilled in the bottom of the new air box and into the two holes that already exist on your fender for the stock one actually. So this was really nice. Everything lined up perfectly and fit very well. So you can see here I'm just getting them started. And these are, I believe they were a 15. But I could be very wrong about that because I thought I was going to be able to see what number they were. But I'm just tightening them down. And here, after I'd separated those two bolts, you can see it's much smaller now than when I pulled out earlier. So I'd separated the top part from the bottom part. And these were an eight millimeter is the, I'm spacing on the word for that piece of the truck, but they're an eight millimeter. I see me just finishing tightening up the rest of them. And now I'm just kind of moving stuff, getting ready to start trying to put on the actual intake into my thing so here I'm putting back on the breather valve I end up taking this back off because this was too hard to do with it connected and this is where I start running into other problems you can see it slips right over and fits on there very snugly so these are the little connector bolts that are supplied by Volant Performance and you actually twist them onto the stock bolts and then your new bolts that hold on new intake thread into those which I really like that I think that's a good way of getting around this and you get to use new hardware so I really appreciate this basically you take those little they're like probably three quarter inch long uh, connectors and you just screw them onto the stock ones and the new bolts screw into those so this is where I started running into problems I had to start messing with my wires to actually get the new intake to fit because it was hitting it like bad hitting it so this is where I'm trying to move around wires I'm trying to get as much room as I can and I end up just having to take off the pink wires, which I didn't show me doing, but I had to completely remove my alternator power wires. You can kind of see it. They're not on there anymore. And then here you can see I'm just getting the new bolts tightened down for the intake itself. So these were a bit of a pain to actually get. You can see it's just wiggle in there. I don't even have it threaded, but it after a while, I finally got threaded in. Is a bit of pain. It's behind it. You can't fit the box end of a socket, a box end of a wrench on there, and you can't fit a socket on top of it. So you just gotta use the open end of a wrench to get on there. Now I'm getting into actually assembling it. So here's the plastic connector piece that attaches the air filter to the tubing and to the intake horn itself. So I'm just sliding this into the box, and then I'm going to attach the filter onto it. Uh, that didn't work out very well. I ended up having to take the filter off anyways. I just didn't have enough movement to actually get the mass airflow sensor on it afterwards. Here I'm reconnecting that sensor that is in that little connector section there. And I did read the instruction over a few times to make sure it wasn't anything tricky with this kit. It's v all very, very simple. Super easy to figure out. Here I'm getting on the connectors uh, that actually connect the mass airflow sensor to the horn to the filter. So here, make sure you check the direction of your mass airflow sensor because they are directional and they won't work if they're in backwards. So I was just double checking. I cut out like a minute of me looking at it, making sure I got it in the right direction. So I double checked that quite a few times, made sure I got it in the right placement. Here you can see where I just ended up tearing that out of the filter box because I couldn't fit it on there anyways. And I almost forgot to put on the hose clamps to attach everything, which wouldn't have worked out very well for me. So here I'm just putting on the hose clamps when you're doing hose clamps you can kind of make it make sure they're all on the same side facing the same direction it makes it look a little bit cleaner it makes it a little bit easier to organize them as well so now i'm just going to push the mass airflow sensor back on and they are tight which i like and they are like the dual uh 
the dual material ones, which I think are really nice, and I really appreciate them using some higher quality connectors. And here I'm just pressing everything back in, getting it into the air box, and getting everything set to get reconnected to the truck. Uh, it wasn't too hard. You just have to move things around a little bit. Everything's meant to flex a little bit. And I had already put the uh, the weatherproofing on the airbox itself that holds a filter. Okay, so as you can see, I got all installed battery cut out at some point. I'm missing this bolt, so I'm hoping everything's pretty solid right now, but I'm hoping that works out. I'm going to take it for a quick drive around the block, and we'll see how she does. See if it makes a difference. I do really like how it replaces everything, so yeah. All right, so here we go. Starts rev. Rev seem fine, so I don't think I have any vacuum leaks from that thing being loose. Charger almost, but it was just it leaking air in. is reproof from what it was. But it definitely has a better engine sound to it. Instead of kind of like the whiny sound that this truck had. So we'll get on a little bit since there's some heat. Like, comment, subscribe if you enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next one.